Hey everybody, John Capobianco here, and I recently asked my community across a couple different social media platforms, what would you ask your netbox? If you could just talk to your netbox in human language, what kind of questions would you ask it? And I had some wonderful uh, responses. So let's take a look at some of these responses. And um, right, try a cable path trace. That would be interesting to see. Based on your current location, current allocation, excuse me, how many IP address spaces do I have left? I'd be asking about specific device types, like how many or number of interfaces, types of interfaces, providing a list of devices to create or modify, like interfaces, adding connections between inter device interfaces. Generate a list of all single points of failure for, all, for my power racks. So that's pretty cool. A list of single points of failure based on power in the racks. What circuits should I look to cancel given the sites they connect to that are no longer active? And what cross connects do I need to make in order to get a fiber circuit from site A to site Z? So that's pretty interesting. So let's try to ask it some of these questions. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the Docker Compose up. And we're going to see a fresh instance build here. So here's the Docker container for the Netbox React agent. And I'm going to go ahead and open it in Chrome because I've stored some credentials in here. And I'm going to leave it split screen so we can watch the agent in action. So I'm going to use the demo dev net, uh, the demo Netbox dev environment. And let's go back here. So this is the dev net, the demo uh, Netbox dev environment. And let's go into the tokens. And I created a token earlier. And we'll reuse this token. And we'll go back to the home page here in Netbox. So we're going to save and continue. And now we can start asking a question. So let's take a look at some of these questions. Try a cable path trace. That would be interesting. To see. So let's go find a cable in the Netbox under connection cables and we can just ask it to do a cable trace for say cable four right termination a termination b so for cable number four could you please do a trace could you please do a trace for cable number four So we're going to send and we're going to see some posts to ChatGPT to OpenAI. I am using the ChatGPT 4.0 model, as you can see specified here. And here, here's the details for cable number four. And it has the A and B terminations and everything you'd want to know about that cable. So it can do cable traces which is pretty interesting. And uh, so Albany router zero, zero, Albany router zero, zero, right? Very cool, very, very cool use case. So now based on the current allocation, how many IP address spaces do I have? So let's try that one. Based on my current allocation, how many IPv4 spaces do I have remaining and we're going to send that and we're going to take a look and see what the agents do so this invoked the agent chain and it's trying to find the allocation and it failed to fetch it so let's try that one again so I have seen it. So let's try it again. There we go. This is a little better answer. So there are 187 IPv4 addresses allocated in your current Netmox data. To determine how many you have remaining, please provide the total IPv space or subnet range you are referring to. So let's just try it one more time. I did actually see it give me um, how many were available and maybe it's my prompt. Based on current allocation, how many IP address spaces do I have left? 
Let's try it a little more specifically. Based on my current allocation, how many IP spaces do I have left? I did see this give me a numerical value earlier. So let's just try it again. And we can see the agents churning away, picking API calls. And hopefully we'll get a numeric value back. So it did come up with there's currently 187 allocated, but we would need to give it some more specific information. All right, let's try another prompt. Specific device types, how many or number of interfaces, types of interfaces providing lists of devices. All right, so let's try some of this. Could you give me a list of my devices? Could you give me a list of my devices? Could it, let's try to add, could it be in table format? Let's see if we can get a tabular representation of our devices. And then I guess the follow-up would be about interfaces. So it tried to provide a list here. Didn't look the best, but it did give us a list of devices. And, whoops. Let's go back to the single points of failure. I think this one's going to be interesting. So let's try this. Could you generate a list of all single points of failure in all my racks? So let's see how this one does. It should get the rack API information. And then it should be able to hopefully analyze the single points of failure. And we can see it churning through different API calls all by itself and iterating and try to figure out if there's any single points of failures here. Oh, I think I should have mentioned power, single points of failure of power. Well, let's just let it figure this out if there's any single points of failure and then we'll narrow it down to power. So it has identified these two racks as having single network connection without backup paths. That's quite interesting. So let's try look for power now. Of power. Can you generate a list of single points of... All right, let's try that question. The original question. Although it was able to provide us a list of single points of failure from a pathing perspective, from a circuit perspective. That was quite interesting. Let's take a look at the power now and see what it comes up with for single points of failure in terms of power. Now I have seen this one work and it gave me a list of five or six different racks with only single power. Here we go. So the above list. Yeah, it didn't actually print the list though, did it? No, let's try that one again. Let's try that one again. Stopped iterating. Let's try it one more time. It's not very deterministic. So there is the JSON payload that it should use. And now it's trying to get the power ports information. And there's the JSON there from the power ports. And 
That's a lot of JSON. This is a big call. And now it's just trying to iterate and figure out the single points of failure here associated with that JSON payload. Now I think when I had it successfully work, and I can show you the screenshot of it, so there we go. I mean, it is giving us this nice table. Maybe I should remove the tabular information. Because one of my earlier questions was asking for the table format. Okay, so here we go. Here's a list of devices that have single points of failure due to having one power connection. And it gives me this nice table of devices that only have a single power supply. Very cool. Very cool. Um, circuits that I can cancel if there's sites that are no longer active. Let's try that. Are there any circuits I can cancel based on inactivity at the site? Now again, this is the DevNet, the, the sandbox, um, and I don't know if it's gonna have that information, but let's try this question. Maybe it will be able to identify circuits that we can cancel based on activity. So here's a list of circuits and their termination sites, but it does not indicate which circuits are inactive. Right? You might need to provide a specific criteria for inactivity. And it gave us some active circuits. Um, and the final question was, right, this one's pretty neat. So how do I get a fiber circuit from site A to site Z? So let's go get a couple sites. We're going to go into sites here. And let's ask a question that says, let's take a look at the question again. What cross connects, right? What cross connects do I need to make to connect site let's go dm albany to dm buffalo <laughs> and now let's see if it will tell us what circuits we need to provide or what's cross connects rather we need to make in order to connect albany to buffalo You would need to establish a new cross connect as there's no existing circuit. Okay. Let's try. That's funny. I had a different answer before. Let's try this again. And I used Butler communication. Let's try that. Butler communications to DM Buffalo. Let's try that one. new circuit again. Let me quickly look at my... Oh, that's funny. Let me go back to my social networks and just check what exactly my prompt was. Um, that was on Blue Sky. Give me one second. I just want to see exactly what I asked it. Single power supplies. Here we go. What cross connects? Let's try this again. What cross connects do I need to make in order to get a fiber circuit from site Butler Communications to DM Buffalo? Let's try that again. I did have this working. Now let's go back to our agents here, see what's happening. It says you need to establish a new one. Okay, all right. I had a different response earlier and it actually indicated where I should um, make that cross connect. Let's try it one more time.
Okay, you need to establish a new one. All right, okay. And I think that's it for questions from the community. Um, but this has been a lot of fun. I, if you know, if you have questions you want me to try, please send them my way, and um, I'd be happy to try them out. The other thing is, it's very easy for you to do this. If you are a Windows user, predominantly most of you are probably using a Windows machine, install WSL2, install VS Code, install Git, install Docker Desktop. I know it sounds like a lot, but set up your environment. Git clone this repository, Docker compose up from the terminal, visit localhost 8501, paste in the netbox public um, URL, paste in your API token, paste in your chat GPT key, start playing with it and asking it questions. I'd be, love to see your, your um, answers, your responses, what you come up with. Uh, this was a pretty good example. Um, it can be better or worse, but I'd love to see us start exploring the world of natural language as the interface into our APIs, such as NetBox. All right, I'll see you soon. Thanks again.